Yellowstone bin eruption may have created new geyser. Geologists have revealed new details about a recent geyser eruption in Yellowstone National Park, including the shallow depth of the eruption and the surprising height of the plume. The geyser that erupted last week in Yellowstone National Park shot water and rock debris up to 600 feet, 180 meters, into the air, scientists say, six times higher than previously reported. Geologists at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, estimated the height of the plume by examining photos posted on social media. They also determined the location and depth of the eruption, which occurred July 23rd at Black Diamond Pool in the Biscuit Basin, about 2 miles (3.2 kilometers) northwest of the famous Old Faithful Geyser. The eruption occurred suddenly, and there were no early signs detected by monitoring instruments, Michael Poland, a research physicist at the U.S. Geological Survey and the scientist in charge of YVO, wrote in Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. No one was injured, he wrote, but the blast damaged a nearby boardwalk, and the basin remains closed while geologists assess the activity. Researchers analyzed rock fragments ejected in the eruption and found that they were made of glacial material, sandstone, siltstone and gravel that lie just below the surface. The eruption did not eject bedrock buried about 175 feet 50 meters below the surface, indicating that the eruption was very shallow, Poland wrote. Shallow geyser eruptions are common in Yellowstone, he added. The damage was minor compared to what might have happened. The blast mostly threw debris toward the Firehole River and away from a nearby boardwalk, where tourists were standing when the eruption occurred. The largest rock confirmed to have been ejected by the eruption weighed several hundred pounds, but fell far from visitors, Poland wrote. Poland added that a blockage in the underground hydrothermal system beneath the Biscuit Basin likely triggered the eruption. Mineral deposits in the water pipes that run beneath Yellowstone and feed its geysers can block the flow of steam and hot water. The blockage causes a buildup of pressure that can eventually overcome the strength of the surrounding rock, triggering an explosion. The eruption likely rerouted the shallow hydrothermal piping system in the Biscuit Basin, and it's unclear what will happen next. By shifting the ground beneath the surface, the eruption may have returned the area to a calmer state, or it may have created new geysers, Poland wrote. It's unknown how the thermal features will react, he wrote, but data that geologists collect from debris from the explosion will provide more detail about conditions at the time of the event. It's about 30 miles across and 45 miles in other dimensions, Poland said. So it's big, but the vast majority of the magma chamber is solid. We can do seismic imaging experiments, and we can see that in some places on the upper surface, it's probably about 25 to 30 percent molten, and the rest is solid. With a 1,350 square mile magma field beneath northwestern Wyoming, many people are jumping to conclusions and fearing for their safety. Could this supervolcano erupt someday? First, large-scale eruptions are very rare. Second, we know from monitoring data and research at Yellowstone that it's not imminent, Poland said. Since the last major eruption of the Yellowstone volcanic system until now, the park has seen 40 to 50 lava flows, a much more common volcanic event. The last lava flow occurred 70,000 years ago, Poland said. Much more common than lava flows or eruptions are large earthquakes that occur over a much shorter period of time, with recent examples being a magnitude 7.3 earthquake that occurred in 1959, or a magnitude 6.0 earthquake in 1975. 
Although events such as lava flows and eruptions are rare, it is still important to monitor the geological activity occurring in the national park. This is where the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory YVO, comes in. The consortium of agencies that monitor Yellowstone's activity was formed in 2002 and consists of nine different agencies. USGS, Yellowstone National Park, University of Utah, they do all the seismic monitoring in the area, a group called EarthScope, and they do the GPS monitoring, the ground deformation, they do the network, Montana State, University of Wyoming, and then the State Geological Surveys of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. So we all work together to better understand Yellowstone. With consistent monitoring and the rarity of large-scale hazardous events that occur at Yellowstone, fears of a sudden eruption are unfounded. 